Hey guys, Youngblood with you for your Should You Buy video on the new Mercury Star Runner from Crusader. Now, this ship is now available for sale with cash-only war bond for $200, which comes with LTI, or if you want to use store credits, you can go with the standalone option for $225. Now, if you haven't seen yet, this ship is designed to fill a couple of different roles, and that's going to include data running, cargo hauling, smuggling, and even potentially some racing. Now coming in at 40 meters long, 38 meters wide, and 11 and a half meters tall, this ship ends up being about the length of the Freelancer, though it ends up being about 15 meters wider and a bit taller, so it's quite a bit of heftier of a ship. Now the ship has a crew size of three, however, I think that could probably end up being closer to four or five, considering you've got two seats on the bridge, you've got two turrets, you've also got the uh, data collection seat plus some other stations. I think you could safely bring along more than three, but you can probably manage with that number. Now, when I mentioned racing, and while it's not really going to compete with the likes of the Razor or the M50 with a top speed of 215 meters per second in SCM and uh, 1050 at cruise, it is faster than the Freelancer though, so that's kind of a perk. Now they claim it's going to be able to handle well because it's got good maneuverability as well as acceleration, and in the brochure they actually mention that the asymmetrical design is partly to show for that. But I think it's more related to the combination of the three primary thrusters that all appear pretty large in size, plus four retro thrusters that allow for quick deceleration, as well as a combination of 12 fixed and gimbaled maneuvering thrusters, which means that this should be a pretty capable ship as far as handling is concerned, making it feel a little bit lighter than it actually is. Um, this is also going to come with two medium shield generators, so it takes the Polaris approach of going light on the armor to help keep the mass lower, but still providing that initial durability until those shields fall. Now, when they talk about racing, though, I think it's important to mention that they specifically mention the Abel Baker Challenge, which just isn't a pure speed race. It involves endurance and jumps and durability and reliability, all that kind of stuff. So don't think you're going to take a Mercury and a closed circuit track and win, but I would say take that in a claim in the way that um, how it could impact your day-to-day -day operations using the ship for other things. Now, aside from that, in the design world, we have an expansive canopy in the cockpit where you have two seats. Um, that also comes with some downward visibility to see the below the pane to some extent. Um, inside the ship, you also have a recreation room with a hollow chest table and some habitation areas for your crew. Now, in addition to those modules, uh, we see that we have uh, medium jump and quantum drives, uh, medium fuel tanks and intakes. Uh, you also have a medium radar. All that ends up being powered by two medium power plants and cooled down by two medium coolers. Weapons-wise, uh, we see two size 2 laser repeaters on three locations of the ship. Um, you got two that are slung under the nose, and then you also have two manned turrets, one on the top of the ship, one on the bottom of the ship. Both of those turrets come with 360-degree mobility for better coverage. It's not a lot of firepower, um, but I've seen ships with quite a bit worse. And in addition to those laser repeaters, it does carry missiles, though we're talking about two size 2 pylons, so by default you get four size 1 missiles. You could technically opt to do two size 2 missiles total, but either way, it's a pretty weak missile load out there, especially compared to something like the Freelancer. Um, defensively, you also do get uh, chaff and flares. So let's break this ship down into the three careers that we haven't mentioned aside from racing, and we'll start with data running. Um, the Mercury takes similar aspects from gameplay design as the Herald, such as collecting data, storing it, then using speed to deliver it to where it needs to go. Um, you can also just be given data to transport without having to actually collect it, more in a pure like transportation type of model. Now where they start to differ is with design and with scope. The Herald has a forward-facing array, meaning that you're going to have to point your ship in the appropriate direction to collect the data that's out there. On the Mercury, you end up having a dedicated seat that connects to a dish that's on the top of the ship. Now this dish doesn't stand up, it kind of is flush with the ship, though you do get some articulation so you can pivot and rotate it to some extent, meaning you get a wider range of scanning without having to actually move the ship. Now it's not 360 degrees by a long shot, but anything that given there actually is going to help you out. Now as far as data storage goes, the Mercury has five total medium sized computers on board, which is a ton. And my guess is that we're going to have four dedicated to data running, one for ship operations, but we're going to have to wait and see on that. Either way, these computers have high levels of encryption, a programmable kill switch, and a customizable security configuration, meaning it should all be very, very secure. 
In regards to cargo carrying ability, you get about 96 SCU of cargo capacity, which puts it equal to that of the Constellation Andromeda. In the rear of the ship, you have an extra wide cargo ramp for getting cargo on and off as quickly as possible, and you have the cargo hold that's in the rear of the ship um, for minimizing your transportation of all of it on and off your ship. Um, additionally, the ship comes with four of Crusader's VTOL thrusters, making getting it on and off the ground very quick and easy. And the last bit that I didn't cover was smuggling, and while that may be kind of a career, it's really an option in this ship at least. Um, there are places that you can access the ventilation system and store goods and people to hide them on board from anybody that wants to find them. Now that ends up being a little bit of an interesting concept because if the ship is known for having these passages and this ability, wouldn't everyone just know that they can check there and probably find the real good stuff? I mean, NPCs might not... There's going to be plenty of people that are flying the Mercury that aren't going to be smuggling, but I think people are going to look at it and say, I should probably check those tunnels that I know are on board. So that's the Mercury Star Runner, but who should buy it? Well, it's a pretty diverse ship, so let's do some comparing. First off, if we compare the Mercury to the Herald, the Herald is cheaper to buy, it only requires one person to fly, it should be faster and able to handle smaller data jobs faster, which means you net more money for less cost. That being said, if there's significant amounts of data or you just plan on being out there for a while collecting data, the extra computers on board the Mercury give you more capacity and capability. The Mercury would be more durable than the Herald, but the Herald's going to end up being harder to hit. Either way, for data, I prefer the Herald. In regards to cargo ability, um, compared to the Constellation, I think the Connie's going to get points for being more combat capable, for having the snub fighter and having that belly lift, which I think is pretty convenient. Um, I think the Mercury is going to get the better cockpit to see trouble coming, and it also has the ability to run data and cargo at the same time, and it's going to have the ability with, um, or is going to have the win there with speed. I think that one's pretty close to a draw, but the Mercury may come out a little bit on top there. And for smuggling, we don't really know enough about it to compare it to any of the other ships, though we've heard a little bit about the whole sea and the Phoenix being able to do some smuggling, but we're going to just have to wait and see with time. Is the ship worth $200? I think so. You know, based on the size, the role, diversity, the cool design, I think it seems worth it to me. That being said, I think that mostly goes out to those who want to do at least two of the three job types that we've been talking about. If you want to just focus on cargo, the Freelancer Max is going to carry more cargo, be 60 bucks cheaper to buy initially, and it's going to have lower cost associated with it in-game. I think in most instances, um, the Herald ends up being cheaper to buy and use, and I kind of have some doubts about how many data jobs are going to exceed the requirements of the Herald's capability. Um, but if you want a very cool-looking ship, and you want to do at least two out of those three of data, cargo, and smuggling, or hell, you just want a kind of a cool, diverse-looking ship that can do cruising the verse, then it's an intriguing option. So I'm a big fan of the ship. I like the design. I like the role diversity. You, know, you all know I like versatility, so I'm a fan. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned, because once we get more information on this, I'll be doing a follow-up on the Q&A. I wouldn't be surprised if we get two Q&A posts on this, because there's going to be a lot of questions about this ship. Otherwise, let me know if you guys have questions. Have yourselves a wonderful night, and take care.